Hello and welcome, Jim. It's great to meet you. I've had quite a quite a long relationship now with Letpot. Been testing out some of your products, which have been a lot of fun. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sam, for having me uh, for this pleasure. interview. The first question: When and how did Letpot start? Letpot was established and began operating in 2019, and it was incubating from our former company called Henshin, based in Hong Kong, and we also have another office in Shenzhen as well, where. We are now. That team was focusing on developing agriculture IoT devices and application solution for institution. This kind of IoT stuff for industry level. I joined the team at around 2009-17. For the IoT platform, we designed the entire solution, like the, the hardware and software, and we will pack them together to another company that needed, for example, agriculture institution. Uh, which grows mushroom or having a greenhouse basis. They, they want to have a more stable environment to uh, grow their crops within the environment. So we provide the, um, say the entire system to them. What was the first real product that you had success with? Uh, well, I think the first product for Lepo is the MP1 and SP1, uh, which call modular panther and self-watering planter, whatever you call it. Uh, it's automatic watering planter, which I'm sure you have tested before. Yeah, yeah. And I've had some good success yeah, with it. I love plants, but uh, it's, always, uh, it's always hard for me to maintain. The, the first idea was, for us was, can, can I minimize the tearing or the work, keep it in a good condition so that we can see it blooming? Uh, rather than spend a lot of time uh, digging into the soil or uh, make our hands dirty. It, it worked too well mm -hmm. for me because I was using it outside and the plants got too mm -hmm. big. I stopped using it halfway through the year and I realized mm -hmm. I needed to do something a little different, maybe using less nutrients so it doesn't grow so quickly. But it's, yeah, it definitely does work. We are thinking about to make something more compact. So there's the idea of uh, LPH Max, the hydroponic system. Yeah, that did yeah. really well for me at the beginning of this year. And I actually have a, a new one. I haven't opened the box yet. So you guys sent me your revised version. I think it's um, it's got some changes because I've made some recommendations and I think you guys have made some good changes there. So I'm, I'm very keen to use that when I start my seeds again. The categories of gardening uh, isn't very really wide. We now have a hydroponic system and we have irrigation kit, and we will soon uh, release some growing light in the near future. We are trying to get to know about the market and the demand from customers and try our best to, say, improve the existing system, uh, whether it's not good enough or can we use some other ways to improve the overall using experience. I have a recommendation for your grow lights. What I mainly use grow lights for is at the beginning of the season. So you already have a grow light. You mm -hmm. sent me one, and I'm going to be testing that this year. And it's it's a low-powered one. In the past, I would use a T5 fluorescent. They're very low output, but perfect for seedlings. The problem with a lot of these LED lights that you get today, they're too powerful for young plants. I think there's a market for lower powered LEDs, affordable lower powered LEDs that can be brought close to the canopy. The growth that I had from the Let Pot Max, that was amazing. That yeah. the, the LEDs you guys used was perfect. The, the yeah. growth was much better than the growth I was getting from some of the expensive LED lights that I have. Thank Beautiful. you for the insight. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, what is your background? Always been in the technology space or agriculture or uh, how, how has it developed? I'm, I'm graduating from the University of Sydney, majoring in IT. So I think I'm in always Australia. doing something. Yeah, Australia, oh, wow. Sydney. So um, I was majoring specifically in data analysis. Uh, after my graduation, I joined the Apple team. With the AI side of things, is that something you guys are looking at? I'm sure you have a personal interest, but is it something that mm -hmm. Ledbot is thinking of doing something with? Yeah, we are doing some research on how to optimize, for example, the environment for the plants to grow. We are very interested in making a, you know, a system is far enough to uh, address 
the overall environment at the ultimate level for the plant to grow. If you have all that data that's collected from an IoT system, plug that into mm -hmm. a large language mm -hmm. model that you're able to interrogate or ask questions, you've got all that information that's able to give you a, a plan. Part of our daily work is to is to improve our product experience. We continuously to improve our product over time in both software and hardware. A big part of why I was interested in Leftpot and, and, and the conversations we've had in the past uh, with Leftpot and myself and the, the systems you're creating, I've been automating my greenhouses for a long time using things like the ESP32. The Leftpot Max is such a good looking device. I love the screen, I love, I love what it does. It, it's it, it does work well. Obviously, there were. I think the first unit I had had a few little bugs, but you guys quickly fixed them with some software updates, and and that was nice to see as well that you could update it. Do you get feedback that you know for some people it's too much? Yeah, um, I think for some people it's uh, very easy to get uh, get the plants to blooming, but for me, uh, I think it's hard because I always forgot to. They to water it regularly. So obviously you got the lead pot max, but you've also got the smaller unit because that one also that did a good job. And also obviously without the screen, it makes the price a bit lower. But that did a fantastic job for me as well. So there are some choices at least. So obviously we've talked in the past, and and I don't know if you are able to talk about this, but we've talked about nutrients because obviously you sell nutrients with your systems, right? Um, and we were talking about developing a, a chili specific nutrient, which I think there's a real gap in the market for something that is really good because a lot of people will use tomato nutrients because they're close enough, but chilies have a, you know, maybe different needs. Are you still looking into that? Are you still looking at developing something like that? We also want to nutrient for uh, from chili, but we are also finding some someone to uh, to cooperate with okay. by providing those kind of things. Thank you so much for all your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you as well.